Hello guys, today I wanted to answer a question that I get all the time. What gear do I shoot with? So today we're just going to do a quick run through of my gear and why I've decided to shoot with what I'm shooting with. So let's get to my camera buddy first. It is the R6, Canon R6, not the Mark II, the Mark I. I've had this one for about two years. This is actually not mine, this is my dad's. Mine is recording right there but it's such a great camera. It's expensive. I might have wanted the R5, but instead I decided to spend the money on lenses, which I know is the better investment. And we'll get to that in a second, but it shoots 4K 60, which is what I need. I mean, 120, I haven't really tried shooting with it, so I don't know if I need it or if I want it, but I feel like 60 frames per second is more than fine. And the picture out of this camera is insane. For the first year or so, I mostly just shot photos with this camera. But since I started shooting videos, especially this year, and started figuring out how to get the best image out of this camera, I've been absolutely blown away with how good it is. And I don't see myself upgrading anytime soon in the future. But I will be saving up for the R1 if that ever comes. I think the rumors right now is that it will come in 24. So we will see, but that won't be before then that I have the money for that. Anyway, I think it's going to be quite expensive. So the R6 for my camera buddy. Then I have two lenses of choice. I have the Canon RF 24-70 f2.8, which is not my favorite lens, but my go-to lens. So I actually used to have the... 15 to 35 instead. That was the first lens that I bought for my R6. And I was super happy with it in the beginning, but I did realize coming from a crop sensor to full frame that 15 to 35 was super, super wide. And I was kind of missing this middle focal range that is 24 to 70, especially when I started shooting video, because then it became quite obvious that I needed to have this exact focal length to shoot most of what I do. and for anyone starting out with video especially, I would definitely suggest getting a 24-70 or something that covers this kind of range. I used to have an 18 to 135, but that was on a crop sensor. So that's probably around 24 to something, which was a great lens for my Canon 80D, I think it was called. Yeah. So I used to have this kind of focal range, but then when I bought my more expensive camera body and I only had the money in the beginning for one lens, I decided to go with the 15 to 35 because it was a great landscape lens and landscape photography was what I did mostly back then. But I definitely regretted that decision. I should have bought this one from the beginning. This one will get you very far and you can shoot the most, it, it might seem like a boring lens to some, but you can shoot such versatile footage. And when I'm not borrowing my dad's lens right now, the 24 to 105 f4, this one more or less always sits on my camera and it's what I record my YouTube videos with and everything else. 24 millimeters can become a little bit of a difficulty shooting these kind of videos because the camera has to be pushed quite far back, but that's the only downside I've seen. If you can get a 24 to 70 f4 or something in that focal range, the 24 to 105 is a great lens as well. You don't really need to get down to f2.8. It's great for photos. I love to do it, use it for videos as well. But sometimes when I know that I have to nail the focus, I will turn it up to f4 anyway to make sure that I have everything that I need in focus. So the f2.8, great for low light, but you definitely don't need it when you're starting out. I do love this lens and I do not regret buying it for f2.8, but just saying that you don't need the most expensive stuff right from the get-go. Moving on to my absolute favorite lens. This is the second lens that I bought for my Canon R6, but it is the 70 to 200 f2.8. This is a super, super expensive lens, but it's my favorite one to shoot with. The bokeh and the separation from the background for your subject when you shoot at 200 millimeters at f2.8 is just insane. I'll show some footage on the screen now while I'm talking, but this lens is absolutely incredible, both for photos and for video. The downside for video is that it's quite difficult to get steady shots, especially Actually with only shooting the camera handheld and having this lens on even though it's stabilized and the camera has ibis as well still super difficult to hold still especially right now in denmark it's super cold outside so that makes it even more difficult to hold still but this lens is a dream to shoot with i absolutely love the image that comes 
out of shooting with this lens and I most often just have it all the way zoomed in at 200 millimeters and more often than not I find myself shooting at f2.8 as well but my dad do have the I actually think I have it right here the 70-200 f4 also an RF lens is absolutely incredible as well it's much lighter it's actually quite a bit smaller as well you can actually see just from them being side by side it is quite a bit smaller and it is significantly lighter as well so it is even a better travel lens i would say this one i can highly recommend as well you don't need to go for the super super expensive one you can save a lot of money getting this one and you might even be able to get something in the focal range of the 24 to 70 space as well if you want to get this maybe get the 24 to 105 and then the 70 to 200 f4 both the four lenses both absolutely great i can recommend going in that direction if you are just starting out otherwise i can only recommend this lens enough the 7200 f 2.8 that's actually my main camera gear i have my drone as well that we will get to in a second but i do have a nifty 50 somewhere but i never use it since i got the 24 to 70 i haven't used my 50 millimeter 1.8 i just don't enjoy shooting that much with it it's mostly been for photos but i don't shoot that as much anymore and honestly when i have the 24 to 70 on i already have the 50 millimeter focal range in there and it's one stop more than i can get from 1.8 but doesn't really make that much of a difference for me so I'm just sticking to these two lenses and I'm trying to keep my setup as minimal as possible. I don't really want to get more lenses. I keep looking at different lenses, the 85mm f1.2 and the 100mm macro lens that just came out and so many lenses that I want to get but I just know that I shouldn't because I don't really need it and I'm traveling a lot so I want to keep my gear as minimalistic as I possibly can. The last item on my list is the Mavic 2 Pro. Good old drone that's been with me for about three and a half years now. It's been flying in a lot of different countries and it's held up quite well. It, I've never crashed it quite luckily or maybe I'm just good about it but it's such an amazing drone. I would recommend for anyone starting out now to get the Mini 3 Pro if you're just starting out or maybe just the Mini 3 that just came out or if you're taking it a bit more serious get the Air 2S. That is an incredible drone and from my own perspective traveling around with a smaller drone would definitely be a lot nicer especially coming back to the minimalistic setup and traveling a lot. For me that would make a big difference. The Mavic 3 just came out and that is kind of like the, the big brother to this one. The main difference is that you have an adjustable aperture on the Mavic 2 and the Mavic 3, which makes a big difference when you're trying to expose your photos and your video when you're shooting and it's already up in the air. You still have to use ND filters, but it makes a big difference. So that would be the downside for me on getting an Air 2S and why I probably haven't upgraded or changed my drone apart from a great image still coming out of this one after three and a half years. So that would be my recommendations. If you need to step up and you want the adjustable aperture, just know that it takes up a quite a bit more space. But the Mavic 3, I don't even doubt it, even though I haven't tried it, it's an incredible drone as well. So the Air 2S would be my recommendation, but the Mavic 3 is definitely one to look into as well. And I think that kind of wraps up this video. I didn't want it to get too long, but that's the gear that I shoot with. Let me know if you want me to do a video on some more beginner-friendly gear. I could research a little bit into that and come with some recommendations if you are into that. But otherwise, that's the gear that I shoot with. One last note I would say is you do not need the expensive gear to shoot amazing photos and video. You can get a lot out of what you already have. The important part is not the gear. More expensive gear makes it easier to make a great image and you will have some features of course that helps the image look great. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care.